Another session of key training. In today's session, we want to learn how to interpret the milestone results. They are back, and it is time for us to begin to the process of interpreting them and being able to um, explain to students and parents what exactly are we looking at. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The teacher homeroom summary page. It looks something like this. You'll get the student information. Okay, and then it breaks the page down um, into sections based on the content area. Okay, we have language arts, we have math, okay, and then we have on the bottom of the screen, we have a legend or a, uh, a code key that's used to help us understand the symbols that will be used as we are interpreting the student's performance. Okay. Let's look at language arts. With language arts, the student will be giving a scale score, an achievement level, a Lexile score. Okay, now, when interpreting the reading and vocabulary performance, please note that you will see up under uh, this particular column head either a minus or a plus. If a student has a minus, that means the child is reading below grade level. If the student has a plus, that means that the child is reading um, either on or above grade level. Now, this next area is designated to describe the performance of a child's writing and language, the points that's earned for writing and language. Okay, now for the extended writing task, uh, the child basically received points uh, based on their ideas and based on usage. Please remember that in the language arts assessment guide, there is a rubric. The rubric details how they are using this scale of one to four for ideas and one to three for usage. Please refer to the language arts assessment guide to see the rubric to determine how the child was rated in each of those areas, which would be ideas and usage. Okay, now for the narrative writing response, um, again, there is a rubric that has been uh, used. And if the child receives a letter, A, B, C, D, or E, those letters mean something. A means that it was left blank. B, it was copied. C, illegible too limited to score, D, non-English foreign language, and E, off topic. Okay, now in interpreting our math, we're going to look uh, uh, more closely at the scale score and the achievement level in particular. Okay, let's get started. Uh, we have our scale score. We have our achievement level. We have the different domains that will be used to determine how the skill score and achievement level was composed. And then we have our norm reference score national percentile range. Okay, let's look at each of those more carefully. With the scale score, I do apologize. Okay, here we go. With the scale score, the child received a numerical value that communicates um, how the child has performed, okay? If the child does not have a performance score, then uh, use these codes to the right to help explain um, what or how or what, basically what the grader of the child's um, test was trying to communicate. For example, PTNA, that means the child was present, test not attempted. DNA means that the child did not attempt. IV means that there was an irregularity, so there was an invalid validation. 
PIV means the same thing, participation and validation. And then CA means conditional administration, meaning the child received uh, an accommodation that was considered an, a conditional accommodation. Okay, next we have the achievement level. Okay, with the achievement level, there are four different achievement levels that a student can be ascribed. We have our level one, a beginning learner, level two, developing learner, level three, proficient learner, and we have level four, distinguished learner.